And in this survey, one of the number one struggles people had was going vegan in this omnivore world, uh, omnivorous world, and not having support from friends and family. Like that's a, that's a big deal, not having other vegans in social situations. Um, so, so. Hey, hey, Empowered Vegan Lifers, Ella here with my co-host Stephanie. What's going on, Stephanie? Hey, it is a beautiful Saturday morning. Ooh, is it beautiful out there it in Kansas City? gorgeous in Kansas City today, yeah. What degrees is it? I'm curious. You know, I would say probably in the 70s. I haven't actually checked, but it was, it was a beautiful morning on the deck. I had my coffee and hmm. enjoyed, enjoyed the morning. That sounds lovely. We are recording on a Saturday, and here in Miami, it's in the 90s uh, for, the, for the third day <laughs> yeah. in the row, which I don't mind one little bit. Uh, and the other thing that is cool about Saturdays is that I do my yoga and because of COVID, they're doing the yoga on the terrace as opposed to inside. Oh, nice. And we've got a beautiful breeze. It's, it's on the second story. So we're outside. It's, and, and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, that sounds lovely. It really is. Mm -hmm. I love it. The other thing I'm enjoying is a new, a new product that I tried from Trader Joe's. Yeah. I love Trader Joe's. Let's, what is it? What is it? What you got? I'm going to show because we are uh, doing video here for YouTube as well. It is Trader Joe's broccoli and kale pizza crust. Hmm. Well, that's it. It looks pretty good. Really? <laughs> I like the description. Yeah. So I, when I saw it, I didn't think it looked very tasty <laughs> necessarily, but the idea of having a healthy-ish crust, and it is, it, it actually is pretty healthy. It is, wow, it's actually not bad at all. Broccoli, corn flour, potato starch, corn starch, water, black kale, olive oil, and salt. Black kale, I didn't even know there was such a thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think it's better than all the other kales. I'm just making that up. <laughs> <laughs> Black kale. Better but than all actually, the other <laughs> it is actually really, really good. Do you is know it what it really? reminds me of? Baby it, food? No. no. Here's the thing. It gets crispy. <laughs> it gets crispy. And oh. it reminds me of, of crispy grits because of the corn. Because of the corn. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and I love grits. I am a Southern girl. For those of yeah. you who don't know our listeners that I, I grew up in North Kakalaki and uh, we ch I just love grits. So I brought them down here. Half the people don't know what grits are. What, do people eat grits in the, in the Midwest? You know, some, it, it varies. I, I've eaten grits my whole life. I love them, but I, yeah, it kind of varies around here. Depends on how, how south you go in Missouri. I think the further south you go in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mom, yeah. my mom's a grits fanatic. It's her comfort food. She is all about oh, the I vegan comfort food. So, so grits with some like vegan cheese and vegan sausage. Oh, oh. my goodness. Yes. And then yes. you can make them Southwest style and put in like uh, peppers and onions. I mean, grits are so versatile. I think that... I, I want, I'm craving grits now. I think I am too. You know, growing up, my favorite meal was shrimp and grits. I love, I loved it. And I went, I, I mean, I would go wild for it. Um, and then when I became vegan, of course, then I, then I started, um, you know, substituting different things. And I, I found it with mushrooms and tomatoes, mm. just delicious, yes. delicious. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm getting hungry. So let's, okay. yeah. let's move on. Let's move Me on too. because we've got it. We're doing something different this episode. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons we're doing something different is that I happened to listen to one of your trainings the other day uh, for our members on, well, here's the thing. We did a survey and yeah. in this survey, one of the number one struggles people had was going vegan in this omnivore world, uh, omnivorous world, and not having support from friends and family. Like that's a, that's a big deal, not 
having other vegans in social situations. Um, so, so we decided to talk about handling uh, family and friends and going vegan. And, and so we decided to talk about going vegan uh, and that particular struggle since it touches and resonates with so many people. And I remembered that you had done a training that's for our members and I went and listened to it. And I mean, I couldn't stop listening to it. I was like, I forgot how incredible that training was that you did. And so I said, well, why are we gonna do the training again? Why not put that training right here in the podcast? So that's what we're gonna do. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad that we are. And I'm, I'm, I, uh, I hope it resonates with people because I know it, it's really more about my journey and what I found to be true for me. And, and then I, you know, and I hope that it, I think that my experience is very common, you know. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I feel like I'm this kind of weird phenomenon. I'm like uh, exceptional are, in my journey. You are the unicorn. I agree. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> but that's what's so great about us being a couple, uh, being a couple, being a couple, uh, is that you, you know, your journey is a little more representative. I think of the majority of our listeners, uh, which mm. is really, really important. So I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, you're able to share that journey with so many just incredible insights that you, that you had based on your journey that you were able to go back and kind of evaluate and explore the journey that you came on and, and really break it down for people in a way that's going to be so helpful. So I'm really excited uh, for people. The other thing I wanted to do is just read from our Facebook group. Uh, for those of you mm -hmm. listening, if you're not in our Empowered Vegan Life Facebook group, get in there. This is the first day of a challenge we're doing in there. Right. We've got so much going on. Uh, we are opening the doors to Vegan Life Coach Academy next week uh, for just four days. So all of that stuff you'll know as long as you're in our Empowered Vegan Life group. And we're all very active in there. It's such a supportive and safe space, wouldn't you say, Stephanie? I, I, I love, love. I, I think that that was really key. One of the keys to my transition, too, was having that, that community around me. Wow. So it's, it is a fantastic place to be. Yeah. I did not know that. I did not know that. Really? Well, yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, well, I'm sorry I haven't said that sooner. Oh. But it's well, true. Very true. That just makes me want to do a little happy dance. Oh, I love your happy dances. <laughs> okay. So uh, Denise, who is also... Uh, a member of Vegan Life Coach Academy commented on a post about what your biggest struggles are. And she said, in my job, I have a lot, I have to do a lot of lunches and social things. I don't want the focus to be on me and my eating, but that's what can cause me stress is that in many cases, I'm in places that don't have a lot of options. And I find it challenging in those work situations to be able to ask. Hmm. So who can relate to that? I'm sure. <laughs> countless Absolutely. people. Yes. Um, here's another one. The biggest challenge has been the people I work with who literally comment every single meal that I have to share with them about my way of eating. Uh, it can be extremely stressful, especially when there is nothing for me to eat at some of the places they want to go. Wow. Work, work is another one. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Oh, wow. Minefield. Here's another one. Another one. I struggle most with going to places like parties and functions where there isn't any vegan food and the comments I get from people that don't understand or don't have a clue. I honestly never have any trouble being vegan, not for a second, uh, unless I go out. Yeah. So even though those particular ones weren't necessarily about family, everything that you talk about, Stephanie, is going to be so valuable uh, for anyone who, who resonates with coworkers, work situations, functions, family, friends, all of that. It's all, you know, it's all, it's all related. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can, I can relate to those statements so much. So yeah, I hope this is helpful. Awesome. Well, let's just get right to it then. Okay. 
Okay, so um, just getting into today's training, like I said, we're going to be talking about navigating the beautiful but rough terrain of family and friends. And, um, you know, to start this, I want to give you a little background about my myself. I was and am a late bloomer when it comes to adopting a vegan life. Um, you know, I came to the awareness of what I was doing to my body by ingesting junk and suffering in my late 30s. And um, that was not exactly the best time in life to be tweaking things. You know, I really commend people who can go completely plant-based, completely vegan, 100%, all in overnight. Um, that wasn't my experience. Um, you know, I have a husband who loves cheeseburgers. I have um, a family who was immersed in conventional agriculture. And I, I have three children who I raised from the time that they were very, very young to be very independent thinkers. And so when I um, decided that this was the life that I wanted, and I wanted to really um, align my my values and my actions you know there was a lot of of pushback from all areas and um so it didn't really set me up for for success <laughs> to be uh, in a fully vegan life and um so i think that this topic i have to tell you i am uniquely qualified for this because i am an expert in what not to do um, you know, my transition took, uh, if I really look back on it, it really took me eight years because that was about eight years ago was when I decided this was what I wanted for my life. And it's taken me eight years to get it right. Um, and, and still in, in the process and in the journey, you know, with, with my family and friends, um, you know, I, I have I, over the last eight years, I have attempted to uh, adopt a vegan life four times. Um, and I want to tell you about my uh, first three attempts because I think that really sets the stage for, you know, the struggles we experience when we're making changes and our family and friends aren't a hundred percent on board because um, each time that I failed and each time um, that I really um, stepped off the path that I knew that I was supposed to be on, it was because of my lack of support from my family and my friends. Um, you know, my first, my first attempt uh, eight years ago, uh, veganism was not, definitely not in the mainstream. And uh, I was reminded by my family that I come from a heritage of um, conventional farming. My grandfather uh, really funded my college education through cattle farming. And that was a constant reminder. And so even though I knew that my values were different than my family's were, I lasted very, uh, I mean, I would say all of 12 minutes. I mean, it was uh, something that I had announced to my family, this is what I was going to do. And I last, I really lasted about six weeks um, because of that guilt. And I think that that is really interesting to look at because our family can put these, and our friends can put these values on us that really skew our views. And so that was my first attempt. Um, my second attempt when I had first become a, a new mom, um, my kids were, were really young. My first two were super young and I was just very insecure as a new mother. And so that insecurity didn't allow me to continue on that path because I felt like, oh my gosh, I, I don't think that I'm feeding them the right things. I really didn't have a whole lot of education. I had no support. And so the things that people would say to me, I would say, Oh, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeding them rice and beans and yet I, I would get all of these uh, comments. Well, you know, they need milk. No, they need meat. They need more protein. And so it was my own insecurities as a new mom. I was like, okay, well, I don't have time to fix three meals. So I'm going to fix one. And I guess we're going to go back to, um, in, ingesting, ingesting animal products. 
And then uh, my third attempt, I lasted about a year and I ended up giving into what was comfortable and safe because um, I simply was not self-confident. I wasn't self-confident in my choices. I wasn't self-confident and educated enough to counter the things that people are saying to me. And so I wasn't able to come into discussions with my family and friends about my choices from a perspective of compassion and education. And I would often come at them very aggressively. I was kind of the picture um, of the stereotype of the, the angry vegan um, with, with them. And because that isn't necessarily who I am, I, I gave it up. And um, so I would say my fourth and, and this final attempt has been very, very different. And because I really took a step back and I looked at my failures and I really looked and really honed in on this was the reason why I had given these things up was because this lack of support and this lack of self-confidence really fueled my, my failures. And um, so I looked at the role I had played in their non-support and I decided I would just take control where I could. Um, and so these were... A, the three things that I came up with was why I had failed in the past and my values moving forward. So um, my first one was my relationships are equally important to my life changes. And prior to that, I had placed others' thoughts and feelings completely above my own. Um, and this time I just kept reminding myself that others' thoughts and feelings about my choices are not at all important, but that my relationships were important and that there is a re there, this is a significant distinction that really takes a lot of objectivity and self-awareness and self-confidence when we're making this major, major life transition into veganism is that my choices aren't their choices and I can live in that and I, I can be self-confident of that. And my relationships with these people that I love and that I'm connected to are equally important to my life choices and that they don't have to be mutually exclusive. And that was an important distinction to me because I kept feeling like I was completely out of balance. Either my relationships, which always ended up, I felt like more important than my choices in life, or I would flip the switch and say, nope, my choices are much more important than this relationship. And when I started to view that as not mutually exclusive, this really opened up um, my path and really opened me up to not feeling so responsible to other people but feeling very responsible to myself and to my values and to what I believe to be true for me. Um, the second thing was I realized and I had to accept that I was the one that was changing the rules. Um, so I knew that I was required to fuel my own progress with empathy towards the people in my life. And that meant giving up the idea of perfection in my relationships there were going to be tough conversations. There were going to be times when I didn't uh, necessarily feel supported. And I was going to have to be assertive and not aggressive. And I think that this was another really important distinction in this fourth attempt. Um, and in carrying on those relationships that I had decided were just as important as my, my life choices. And then my, my third realization was that I was embracing a vegan life at a time when I'm primarily responsible for the loving care and feeding of three other human beings. And I felt very conflicted, very torn at times. And it was with stepping back and making those observations about feeling conflicted and feeling torn. Um, and I had to just accept these feelings observe them with compassion, as Ella so eloquently puts in, in 
all of this program, observe the feelings, accept them, and then make decisions based on what I had come to observe. And, um, and that was really a very, very important point because I think for me, I carry a lot of mom guilt and I think that most moms do. Um, you know, as we were talking about Shannon, you know, the, the life, the balance of life is just crazy when you're raising a family. And, um, and particularly when you're making big life changes like this, um, it was important to me that I really challenge those thoughts about what I was doing in terms of these three little human beings that are completely dependent on me for their feeding and their care. And knowing that I was going to change my life and I was going to be changing theirs too. And looking at, stepping back and looking at that. So those were my three foundations for, um, for this time being so different. Um, so this time I made the transition solely about me and I didn't make any ground announcements. I did things in stealth mode. I monitored my own body. I eating mindfully, observing the people around me and how they were adapting to those changes. So I began focusing on nutritional bang for my buck, um, trying new recipes, cutting out meat, then dairy, and my last holdouts, of course, were cheese and half and half in my coffee. Um, and, uh, and I felt really, really good about that. And when I felt good about those things, and I had finally made those transitions in my own life, um, particularly in my eating, that's when I started to invite my family and my close friends in. And um, through my observations, this is what I noticed. And these are my own observations. This is not scientific in any way. But um, I do come from a psychology background, and so I think that I'm always looking for cycles and patterns in, in my own life and, and in how I relate to other people. And so this is what I noticed happening to the people around me, was this, this, these stages and in, in response to my transitioning into a vegan life. And the first stage I noticed was defiance. I noticed the people around me responding to me in defiance. And some of the phrases that I would hear and I think are common to people that are transitioning are, you know, that's crazy. You love bacon. You, you know, what are you going to do? You, you know, animals are, they're put on the earth, you know, read it in the Bible. What are they put on the earth for? You know, I would, I would hear those things. And in my research and looking at other transitioning vegans, this is something that I think a lot of us experience with the people around us. And so that stage one is that, that defiance that, oh my gosh, what, what, what can this possibly do for you? Um, as I kind of sat with that and was, you know, again, doing more observation and letting them, um, you know, do what they needed to do in response to my changes, I noticed they, they shifted some of them pretty quickly into stage two, and that was resistance. You know, um, it wasn't quite as um, overt as defiance, but it was definitely a stance of, well, I, I I, I don't know if this should be the, your, your life path, you know, their resistance to my life choices. And, you know, some of the things that I would hear is there's no way you get enough protein. <laughs> of course, I think we could all, um, you know, create and put on t-shirts and memes uh, all over Facebook about, you know, where do you get your protein? So I think that that really happened in this resistance stage is people asking us, you know, you can't possibly get enough protein. Not necessarily as um, overt as the defiance stage, but definitely, you know, questions with judgments. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I heard from my dad was, you know, your, your son's growing. Have you seen him? He's almost 5'10". Uh, he's growing. He's going to need meat, you know. And, and that kind of resistance to, to my choices. And again, I sat back and I just kind of let it all, all happen. And uh, eventually, and for many of them, 
again, went very, very quickly into stage three, and that was more curiosity. How, you know, look, looking at this and really seeing how it works with a genuine curiosity. Um, and so I, I, when people go into this stage, I notice that they just ask a lot of questions like, you know, what's almond milk taste like? No, really, where do you get your protein? I'd be interested to know, you know, where do you get your protein? Things like, oh, can I have a bite of, of your food? You know, what's that taste like? And, um, and then they move into the stage four of acceptance. Um, with my kids, this was uh, the first three stages happened pretty quickly with their response to my choices and they, they kind of got to acceptance pretty quickly. Um, one of my, when I really re realized this with my seven-year-old, Eva, she said to me um, one night, uh, we were going to a ball game and she said, well, can I have a hot dog? And I said, you know, I think there's better choices. We're, you know, we've, we've brought some fruit and we brought other things. And my mom turned to the stands uh, of the other parents there. And she said, my mom's vegan. We can't have hot dogs. And she said it with just such a matter of fact, um, observatory kind of tone of voice and everyone kind of laughed. And, but it was really, it wasn't something that she said in a way that was defiant. And it wasn't something that she said, she wasn't being resistant. She was just accepting the fact that this is, this is what my mom does now. And, uh, and then finally, um, stage five has become, ha has ha been happening. And that's actually that people around me are embracing it. Um, you know, okay, could you make that quinoa salad again? Um, my, I heard my mom talking to one of her friends and she says, hey, Stephanie's working for a vegan company now called Sexy Fit Vegan. And she was actually really proud of that and telling people that. And, um, Another thing I, he I heard my mom said, hey, if I'd known vegans were such foodie foodies, I think I would have tried to join them a long time ago. And I just love that, that we've come to this stage. And so these are things that I've noticed with this time and just in my observations. And, and the other part that I've noticed is that um, I've observed them going through that cycle with me. And now the people that are closer, close to me and are seeing... Um, you know, the progress that I have made in my life and, and really the, the happiness and the, you know, the, the joy that it has come into my life since, since adopting a vegan life, um, you know, they're beginning to look it over for themselves. And they really kind of start that cycle over again. And that they start from stage one with the defiance and stage two, the resistance, and then going to curiosity and, and um, you know, hopefully we'll get to some acceptance and embracing. And I've noticed this even with my children. This happens with my children. Um, like I say in Vegan Life Coach Academy, boom, Stephanie, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I love your booms. That's, that makes out. That always makes me feel good when you get a boom. Right? It's yeah. It's so funny because I didn't. I never thought about it. It was something a coach of mine many years ago used to do, and somehow I, I adopted it, and it just it just comes out. So whenever somebody makes a big realization or has this aha moment, and I just feel it, like I just want to say boom. So I write boom in the comments with the little explosion explosion emoji. Yeah. And people seem to like it. I, yeah, I know I do. Still, <laughs> after all these years. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing, you know, I wanted to add to that is the whole mindset component around going out to eat. Since yeah. that is something that we talked about at the beginning of this episode that so many people were talking about, the mindset shift that mm -hmm. can be really helpful. Yes. What yeah. are your thoughts about that? You know, and I, I want to take this from my own experience again. I, I don't like to make this about me, but I do think it's a really good example is that I remember eating at a restaurant for the first time and really thinking about very little about the food, you know, just ordering and, but it was all about the relationships at that table and realizing that that, that was key in keeping those relationships intact 
and once my focus was off that food, because it really isn't, it's never about the food, really. You know, of course we like to eat, but when we're going out to dinner, isn't it more about the, the social aspect of things? That, I mean, things changed, things changed. And, and I think that that can carry over into a lot of different areas. You know, if, if you're, uh, you know, out for work for lunch, switch that mindset. It's really not about the baked potato anymore. It's really about, you know, cultivating that relationship that, you know, that's going to, uh, you know, be important to your career. If you're out with uh, your kiddos, it's about focusing on those kiddos. If you're out with your spouse, it's about focusing on the relationship that you have with your spouse. You can, you can translate it into all different ways. So I think that's, I think that's important. No, I think that's, that's super important because the truth is when you're not in control of where you're going because you're doing it with your, your coworkers, then there's either options or not. And, and if they're not options, what can you do? Right. And right. It, it's out of your control. So what is in your control, how you, how you uh, respond and how you think about and what your perspective is on that event that you're at. And so I think that's super valuable as well. So thank you for that, Stephanie. You're welcome. All right. Well, I, we're going to wrap it up here. We are going to continue this conversation though next week with mm. some, well, I'm not going to give it away, but it's, it's powerful, <laughs> powerful stuff, powerful stuff coming up next week as well. All right, you guys, if you are loving what you hear, please make sure to leave us a quick review and share, share with your friends and your family, you know, those people that may not be on board yet. <laughs> Use those I statements, say, I love this podcast I'm listening to and I'd love to share it with you. Just a little food for thought. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time.